Good afternoon. My name is Ellen Worsdahl, and I'd like to welcome everyone to our fourth seminar for the One McCormick series. For those of you who do not know me, I work in the undergrad office with a number of our student organizations within McCormick. I look forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you and serving as your moderator again for today's presentation. Our speakers for this presentation are Carol Henry and Stephanie Dow. Carol is the current internal president and Stephanie is the current external president of our undergraduate chapter of Women in Computing, also known by their acronym WIC. Before I get started, I have a few housekeeping items to review and then I'll turn it over to Dean Otino who will introduce Carol and Stephanie. This seminar will include a presentation by Carol and Stephanie followed by Q&A. If you want to ask a question, please post it to the Q&A, which is a feature you can find at the bottom of your screen. I would also like to let you know that today's seminar will be recorded. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Dean Otino. Thank you, Ellen. I probably want to recap why is that we are doing this and then say a few words about the birth of women in computing. So the reason that we're doing this is Northwestern is a complicated network of activities and so is McCormick, lots of pieces. And I think it's important that we have a global awareness of what's going on in this network. So that's why we are highlighting some groups, explaining what they do and Eventually, we want to change the culture in the following way. I think that the default option now for many of us is that if we do not know something is going on, the assumption is it's not going on. There are many more things going on within the network that is McCormick than what people think, okay? Now, I mentioned the word culture there. In 2012, and very rarely this happens, um, I had the means of supporting a group in computer science. And not because you have money to invest, and the focal point was be able to send a whole bunch of students to Grace Hopper, which was a nice conference point, not because you have money and the focal point, something functions. It functions because somehow organically a group acquires, forms leadership and there is a continuation of leadership. And I'm delighted on how women in computing has evolved since 2012. I remember the meeting vividly. I asked Ellen like in many other occasions, Round that people, and we want to announce that we want to create a group. We didn't have a name then. And I think the most important thing is how this group, and I got lucky in another respect, and I cannot take credit for this, and it was the appearance of Sarah Sud on the teaching side in computer science. The idea was to change the culture of the place and make this flow out and change the culture of McCormick. So I'm delighted that we have Kerry Henry and Stephanie Dio uh, presenting to us today. And I think this is one of the points of pride for McCormick, women in computing. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dina Tino and Ellen for the introduction. Um, as I just said, my name is Carol Henry and I'm the internal president of WIC or Women in Computing. Um, I'm also a senior majoring CS and with me today uh, is my partner in crime, my co-president, uh, Stephanie. Stephanie, could you introduce yourself too? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Stephanie. Um, I'm also a senior in CS. Um, and yeah, nice to meet you all. <laughs> and welcome to our presentation. Thank you all for coming. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Yeah, two of us are super excited to talk about WIC and it's awesome to have so many people here. It's kind of great to see that, you know, there are so many members of the Northwestern community who really care about building up women in STEM fields, particularly those in tech, given our current topic for today. Um, today, Stephanie and I wanted to explain more about WIC, our mission, and what we do to make that happen. So what you see right now um, is our mission statement. 
Women in Computing, or WIC, is a Northwestern community for women, non-binary, and trans folk who are passionate about technology. We connect our members with professional opportunities and mentors and help with the, them to develop technical and interpersonal skills through workshops and opportunities for leadership. These events help uh, foster a, belong, a sense of belonging and solidarity and leave them proud and excited to be in tech. Now that's WIC's mission at a high level, but I think the way WIC has impacted both me and Stephanie really showcases that what we do is in line with advancing this mission here. So for me personally, I started Northwestern out as an integrated science program major and a biomedical engineering major. I was really lucky that my peer advisor recommended that I take EECS 111 uh, before it was called CS 111 alongside organic chemistry that freshman fall. Because of that, within a month of starting school here, I realized I was in the wrong majors and started to consider CS as maybe the right one. Um, another stroke of luck around that time I started to doubt my current majors was that I saw an advertisement for Wix Halloween social event, which you can kind of see in one of the images displayed here. And the advertisement basically said that, you know, it was open to anyone and the whole point of it was to meet other people in CS. And, you know, that advertisement is really in line with what we still strive to do today. Wix really uh, works hard to have the lowest barrier to entry. So our events are open to anyone. Um, we assume like no technical experience. Uh, we don't expect our members to show up to every event, just the ones that interest them. And our definition for a member is just someone on our listserv who is getting our emails. Uh, so I'd say when I went to that event, I went to the garage, got my dinner, because all of our events are basically catered when we're in person. And I did get to meet a lot of people within CS. Um, from that event, I think my takeaway was a lot more confidence in my eventual decision to then change my major to CS about a month later in November. So. It was probably only a year later again when I started to doubt myself again. Um, this was because it was my first time recruiting and basically me and all my friends found ourselves going after software engineering internships. Um, the doubt came in because I realized I was super enjoying like psychology, marketing and design. Um, but then I realized software engineering, it's just, it's a lot of coding, which is fine, but I felt like I was missing some other aspects. Um, luckily that sophomore year, WIC, held for the first time our now annual student career panel. And it was like that event where I was first introduced to product management and it really got the wheels in my head turning because that is a position where I can showcase like a much more wider variety of the skills I've developed here at Northwestern rather than just the sliver of me that can code on a computer. And I think it's really because of that event that now like after I graduate in June that I'm going to be doing product management or PMing as a full-time position. So. I guess my story here is just one example of how WIC is able to support its mission, but I'm gonna turn it over to Stephanie to share her own story about how WIC has impacted her. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Carol. Um, so like Carol, I also didn't come into Northwestern as a CS major and I didn't even come in as McCormick actually, um, because as the high schooler, I'd always say stuff like, oh, I could never be an engineer, even though I hadn't really ever tried it out before. Um, it was just something that I truly just never imagined myself doing or being good at. Um, but once I got to Northwestern, my mom, who is a software engineer, really encouraged me to just at least try one CS class. Um, and so I enrolled in EECS 111. And this was a huge shift for me, especially with Racket. It was just like a lot of new things and I had never had any prior programming experience. So I was definitely like in dire need of support and guidance. Um, and so I debated joining clubs like IEEE, um, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers and SWE, Society of Women Engineers. But WIC just really stood out to me because when I spoke with them at the student org fair, I was just so taken aback by how confident and supportive and welcoming the exec board members were. Um, and I just really wanted to absorb their energy and like learn it for myself and, and do that for myself. And so after joining WIC, I got involved in the mentorship program and I was mentored by one of the exec board members for two quarters. Um, and during that time, my mentor supported me through so many challenges and struggles, not just academically, but also like emotionally and mentally. Um, and I was also able to meet a lot of other mentees and develop strong friendships with them, some of which I have maintained to this day. Um, and it just truly made me feel like I was a part of a community at Northwestern. 
um, and joining the WIT community led me to realize that my story of being closed off to engineering and feeling really unsure and insecure of my skills and abilities was not unique or rare at all. So many women are so quick to just reject the field of engineering because they have some preconceived notion that maybe they don't have a place in the field or that they won't be good at it. Um, and knowing that this was a common experience just really helped me feel less alone. And WIC honestly helps me with this issue like to this very day. Um, in the past three internships that I've had and participated in, I've always been the only woman on my team, which is um, a very isolating and in insecurity inducing experience. But whenever I felt this way, I would reach out to my WIC community um, and they always welcomed me and they helped soothe my fears with open arms and they supported me through my struggles and they had stories that I could relate to. And so overall, WIC has just been a huge part of my four years at Northwestern. Honestly, if it hadn't been for WIC, I might not be doing CS right now. I might have quit and done a different major um, or settled for not achieving my dreams or my goals. And so WIC has definitely just helped me become more confident, empathetic, uh, and strong person. And I hope other WIC members feel the same way. Oh, oops. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, and so now we're just gonna go through a really short introduction of our exec board. So on the top row, we have our external execs um, who are led by me, the external president. So we have Rawan Mohammed, our community outreach chair, Priya Kini, our public relations chair, and Megan Yar, our corporate relations chair. And on the bottom row, we have our internal execs led by Carol, the internal president, um, Millie Tomar, our programming chair, and Mega. Ramanathan, who is the programming co-chair, Ricky Pan, our treasurer, and Jenny, our historian. Um, oh, and so now we'd like to review some of the work that WIC has done over the past year to enhance our community and to help our members achieve their career goals. Um, so every quarter we try and have at least one community building event where our members can meet new people, get to know each other, and just feel integrated into the WIC community. So this year we've held events like trivia, study hours, and an imposter syndrome workshop. And we just like hosting these events because they provide a nice relaxing environment for our members um, and they promote a sense of community. And there's also usually free food. Um, <laughs> being remote these past two quarters has made it more difficult and challenging, but we're still hosting these events in hopes of bringing people together during tough times, especially for our freshmen because a lot of them can't come onto campus. So they're having trouble um, meeting other people and feeling lonely. So. Um, we're definitely still holding these events and our internal community of members is super important to us, but we also try to expand to other organizations um, and collaborate with them in order to develop an even greater community. Um, and so we encourage a lot of greater diversity on campus and in CS. So we like to partner with organizations like IEEE and SWE. Um, and actually this photo right here with the whiteboard is from our annual whiteboard campaign where we ask students of all backgrounds to share why they support women in tech. And we're just so grateful to have allies on campus who care about increasing representation in tech as much as we do. And we're continuing to do so during remote learning. We're actually partnering with Blockchain Group on an event tonight um, at 7 p.m. So I hope to see some of you guys there. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we also try to connect our members with role models so they can figure out like what they want to do, what their career goals are, um, and how they can achieve their goals. And so one of our most popular events is actually our faculty lunch. Um, and during this event, our members get a chance to talk to female professors at Northwestern, some of who we have on this call, so hi. <laughs> and it's a great chance to talk about all kinds of topics ranging from um, how the professors got into CS, what it's like to go to grad school and why they decided to go to grad school, as well as balancing family and work. And in a couple of weeks, we're actually gonna be kicking off our mentorship program that I mentioned earlier, um, where underclassmen get paired with upperclassmen. And our mentorship program is just a really great way to help underclassmen navigate Northwestern and get advice on what recruitment is like for an internship, if they're interested in going into um, industry or academia or whatever after college. Um, and yeah, lastly, the other type of community that we really try to promote is outreach with our local community. So our community outreach chair is in charge of organizing events um, where we volunteer with local high schools. So actually these photos are from events that we did last year where um, we went to New Trier High School and we taught girls how to code in Python, which was really fun. And we also built these care packages for um, CPS students. And this is just a way for uh, WIC to help 
further our future community and help promote STEM for girls so that they just know what opportunities are ahead of them and so that they aren't hindered by imposter syndrome and just um, learning about what opportunities they have in front of them. Yeah, so Stephanie did a great job explaining how WIC tries to build community at multiple levels, but now I'm going to go into more of our career-centric events. Um, the first group of events that I'd like to talk about is our recruitment and networking events. Um, so first off, I'll say by that WIC is so lucky to have corporate sponsors and to be able to host these recruitment and networking events with them. I think that these events help give us an opportunity to provide our members with some information that you might not get in your typical CS class. Uh, I think first and foremost, it would be an overview of what the recruitment process is like for CS majors. Um, directly from recruiters themselves as well. I think the other thing we help to expose them that they might not get in the classroom is what it's like to actually work uh, at a tech company or the technical part of a company, probably from someone in that technical position as well. And I think also just like being able to have these conversations during these recruitment and networking events really helps to provide a much needed light at the end of the recruitment tunnel since that process can just frankly become overwhelming, stressful, and very long for all of us. And I'm gonna stress that light at the end of the tunnel some more and talking about our second category of career events, these career explorations more. So you, what we hope our members have when like traversing this tunnel is that their sites are out on a job that they want, but before that they kind of need to identify what job they do want. Um, the most popular job as a CS major is probably software engineering, like I mentioned before. And as a result, I think it's really easy to go blind for all the other possibilities. Um, you know, and I think the problem with this is that if women don't see themselves as a software engineer, but also don't realize that there are these other paths available, then we're just making diversity in the tech industry an even harder goal to achieve. So for this reason, that's why WIC hosts these career exploration events to help our members explore other CS career paths that their major can get them. So as I mentioned before, we have the student career panel event where we get upperclassmen. Um, sorry, Stephanie, do you mind going to the previous slide? Thanks. <laughs> upperclassmen come in to talk about their internship experiences working in different positions, be it software engineering, product management, data science, or another career path. And that is more focused on industry positions. So then we also have a research panel event where we get students to talk about their experience in research, um, to show more of the academia path and also encourage our members to try out uh, research while they're here at Northwestern. So yeah, moving on to, I think the final category of career events. Um, it's great to know what job you want, but you probably need to get some skills to actually get that job, right? So that's why we have a few technical workshops throughout the year. The goal of these workshops is to either expose um, our members to a common tool used in industry or maybe to show them the type of programming that isn't as emphasized in some of the CS classes we have here at Northwestern. Um, again, to maintain this like really low barrier to entry, we assume no technical uh, experience, which is why when we do these workshops, we basically cover the fundamentals of whatever topic we're doing and then try and provide a couple resources so that members on their own can do a deeper dive and learn more about it. Now, uh, the last event we wanted to talk about is the Grace Hopper Celebration because it really is this like huge culmination of both community and career when it comes to women in technology. Now, if you don't know what the Grace Hopper Celebration is, uh, it's the largest gathering of women in tech. Although this year it went virtual for the first time, I think in this 20 some year history of the conference, over 30,000 people were still able to participate. And participants are able to go to talks, workshops, panels, mentoring circles, and like this giant career fair to, you know, basically meet other women in tech and also sort of help figure out like their place in this industry. And, you know, Dina Tino mentioned that, you know, with Northwestern's help on the funding side, you know, Women in Computing has been able to like organize a trip for our members to participate in this like really life-changing conference. I've seen people figure out what they want to do with their life and also just get a job at their dream company because of they got to attend the Grace Hopper celebration. And I think if the last couple of years are anything to go by, then probably our members have collectively had the opportunity to interview like over a hundred times, maybe 200 times at companies that often don't come to Northwestern to recruit students as well. But not only that, we might be able to put an estimate number on the interviews that our members have been able to get collectively, but I honestly don't know the number of how many new friendships have been born just because people have gone on this trip. I know for me, 
I met so many people within CS, not because of like we had a previous class, but simply because we were both able to attend the Grace Hopper Celebration trip through Women in Computing. Um, so yeah, I guess just to wrap it up, you know, whether you're a donor who really helped fund WIC's participation in the Grace Hopper Celebration, and, and Northwestern faculty who's helped volunteer for one of our events, a fellow undergraduate member of WIC, or someone who's just learning about our organization for the first time, thank you so much for coming and listening to the, our talk, really. Um, hopefully Stephanie and I were able to convey what our mission is and our events uh, that help realize that mission. Um, I know WIC means a lot to both Stephanie and I, um, and it really wouldn't be what it is without the support of so many other people here at Northwestern. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to follow WIC, we have some contact information at the bottom. Might be hard to write it all down, but a screenshot will do it for you. Um, and with that, you know, that's kind of the end of what Stephanie and I have for the presentation, but if there are any questions, we're totally happy to take them. Awesome. Well, you're in luck. There are questions. <laughs> so I want to thank both Carol and Stephanie. Um, and to just kind of use the time that we have left to ask a few questions. Uh, the first question uh, was going to go to Stephanie. Um, when we all had to make the sudden shift to remote programming this past spring quarter, I had several conversations with some of your general members, and they shared that WIC had continued to conduct community building programming in the remote setting. Can you speak just a little bit um, to some of the challenges and successes that you had with remote activities? Yeah, so actually like when we went remote, we always, we have this annual spring banquet event um, every spring quarter where we kind of just honor our seniors who are graduating um, and we just share a little bit about what we've done um, throughout the year as an organization. And so we had to convert the spring banquet to be virtual, which was definitely a challenge, um, <laughs> but we still did that. So the challenges with being virtual are definitely like things can be a little bit awkward. There's some awkward silences and pauses. People aren't exactly willing to open up right away. Um, especially in the community building events like that can be really uncomfortable for people. So what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to make that a little easier for people. So we had a trivia event um, a couple weeks ago where we broke people up into these breakout rooms for trivia teams. Um, and an exec member was in each breakout room and we kind of started the conversation, made everyone feel a little more comfortable to talk. Um, and we just really wanted to do that because most of the people who were attending the event were actually freshmen and um, they were not on campus. They were all like kind of sad and lonely and at their homes. And so we were like just trying to make conversation with them and develop some friendships with them and um, create a network, a network between all of them because that's what we were able to do during our freshman year. That's how I got involved with WIC. That's how I met most of my friends who are in CS. And so we were just trying to replicate that in a virtual setting for our freshmen um, in the best way that we could. And so I guess that challenge led to a, a success because um, we worked with what we had and we just tried making things as comfortable and um, as supportive as possible for our members. Awesome, awesome, thank you. <laughs> um, Carol, um, I'm gonna give this question to you. Um, would you be open, do you think, uh, to continued engagement with um, computer science Northwestern students after they graduate, so with alumni? Um, and have you ever thought about um, how you guys could possibly interact with alumni? Yeah, I think that's something that we considered doing. Of course, it's a little bit hard, especially with, um, I guess, the pandemic kind of throwing kind everything, of throwing everything crazy, crazy this year. Crazy. Um, but I think in the past, at least with WIC exec, we've always held on to some ties. And I know like Stephanie and I bother our previous co-presidents from past years a lot. Um, and so I think it's just, the question is how do we scale that up? Um, and then maybe it's about being able to hold, collect more alumni information and then reach out occasionally to maybe do more events. So like we have a student career panel, but maybe we flop that, flop that over to more like alumni career panel. But I think that's definitely something that uh, is an area where you can definitely like work towards. Excellent. And Stephanie, is um, WIC open to um, students who are outside of a CS as a major? Yeah, totally. Um, actually, last year, one of our exec board members was a CogSci major. So um, even to be an exec, you definitely don't have to be involved in CS at all. Um, I think like, like Carol's mentioned earlier, we have a really low barrier of entry. All we care about is that you're interested in tech or you're maybe just want support. Maybe you just want like a female community surrounding you. Um, 
And so we're just open to almost everyone. <laughs> awesome. And Carol, what programming or activities does WIC do to help encourage members to pursue graduate school or careers in academia? I'd say um, there are two events that come to mind immediately. The first is the research panel, which I talked briefly about, mm -hmm. where um, we'll get like undergraduate students, but sometimes we'll also get some of the masters or like PhD students to talk about their experience. So I think that um, shed light to some of more of the academia research path, but also our faculty lunches where students get to talk more one-on-one -on -one with faculty. And so yes, they learn about the personal life, but they can also hear about, you know, the career path that they took to see if academia is a career path of interest to them. Excellent. And Stephanie, if you had to pick one thing, um, oh, uh, about uh, WIC that has, that you are proud of that they've done to support female students over the last three years, what would, what would you think that would be? I think it would have to be Grace Hopper. Um, I'm really proud of how WIC supports sending members to Grace Hopper. I think it's really just incredible. Um, we send such an insane amount of students every year. It always astounds me. I think Northwestern is actually the number one school who sends the most students to Grace Hopper, which is crazy. Um, like Carol mentioned earlier when she was speaking about it, Grace Hopper just really helps girls find um, what they want to do in careers. It gives them more opportunities and definitely helps you build friendships. Like two of my best friends have become my best friends because of Grace Hopper. Um, and it's just really great to see all these other women or all these other people who support women. In um, my mom went to Grace Hopper last year to visit us and that was really cool. <laughs> so I, I just have such a soft spot for Grace Hopper. It really helped me um, overcome some of my insecurities when it came to recruitment. Um, and it made me definitely feel like I was not alone in experiencing imposter syndrome or troubles with finding a job. And it just, it just really helped. Awesome. And can masters and PhD students join WIC? Yeah, we send um, we send grad students to Grace Hopper as well, and um, a lot of masters and grad students do show up to our events, and we always welcome them. Awesome. And Carol, I this uh, this question's for you, <laughs> and so this is one that I've been asking for for uh, each session that I've been lucky to enough to moderate. Um, what's one thing that you look forward to when we all can return to campus and you can be in the same room? Yeah, this actually came up in a different event with my dorm, um, but the way it came up is basically we had an event and our vice president, who's like 6'5", outed our president, who's like five feet. So <laughs> I'm used to everyone being about as tall as two thirds of their Zoom box. So I'm really excited to just see how tall people actually are in real life. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. I love the creativity with that answer. Um, and as you may have noticed, our, our time is quickly coming to an end. So I just want to take a moment to thank Carol and Stephanie for taking the time to share information about your WIC chapter. Um, Carol and Stephanie, I really wish that we were in person and you could one, hear how tall or see, or see how tall I am. And then two, <laughs> to be able to hear applause. Um, but in lieu of that, I'd like to give you both literally a virtual round of applause. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'd also like to thank Dean Otino for again, creating this opportunity for us to all come together um, and our marketing staff for continuing to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank everyone in our audience for taking time out of your day and just spending some time with us. So have a great rest of the day and thanks a lot.